Yo, what's going on everybody? It's the Kitty G and I'm back again with another video. In today's video, I'm gonna try to keep it within an hour as long. I'm not gonna get it too too in-depth on every topic, but we're gonna discuss every single topic. And there's about 20 to 15 topics that I gotta to get through today. So guys, do me a favor. If you are enjoying my content, check the comments, check the description down below. Every single story should be there. Subscribe if you're new. And you know what guys, do me a favor. Only 50% of you guys who are actually subscribed like my videos and subscribe to my channel. So if you could do that, that would really help me out. But let's get the show started today. We're gonna to be discussing stuff in regards to Latar Martinez, link being linked to Arsenal. Ben White, we're going to be talking about Madison. We're going to be talking about possible plan Bs for Jay Madison in Odegaard and Mateus Pereira, possibly if we cannot get the James Madison deal done. Atletico Madrid are in for Lacazette. Hector Bellerin's agent is very, very busy trying to get the deals done and everything done and dusted over the next couple of days. You also have Tammy Abraham rumors popping back up again. You have Jay Madison stories popping up. Odegaard leaving Real Madrid being spoken about a possible right back replacement an Italian cha world champion Euro champion who is he let's we'll find out more about Di Lorenzo the right back that's being linked to Arsenal today and is on Arsenal's radar Runnerson situation <laughs> just it just makes you laugh looks like another deal has fallen through with another Arsenal player and the latest on the Aaron Ramsdale and everything else in revolving around the goalkeeper situation at Arsenal stay tuned for more let's get the show started you already know what it is Kitty G Big up to every single one of you guys who are subscribed already and, and liking the videos. But let's get the show started the right way. Bang. Yes, 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 people. So how's everybody doing today? It's the Kitty G and we're back again with another video. And today we're going to be talking about a bunch of things. But you know what? We got to begin with the with the people at home. We got to talk about our home, uh, who we already have in our club. Players like Lacazette, Hector Bellerin, Alex Runnerson, Shaka, all need to leave this club sooner than later. But of course, they're being linked away and we got to talk about it. So let's just let me just run through some of these stories quickly and we'll get back. On today's show, I got a really good one for you. Emil Smith Rose contract has been confirmed by the club. He will be wearing the iconic number 10 shirt. He has signed a new long term contract with the club. Now, this is great news holding on to one of our best youngsters, Aston Villa. Suck it. And we got. James Madison still on 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 target. You know what? The number eight shirt might uh, might be his shirt to take now that the number ten shirt is gone. And you know what? Just look at this. Stop it right there and listen to that. But yeah, Ainsley Maitland Niles might be the guy who could get us over the line with the James Madison deal. It looks like James Madison is still a major target for Arsenal, and it could still happen. Reports out of the mirror say that Max Aaron's could come to Arsenal for about 20 million pounds. Deal or no deal, I'm taking that. Granit Xhaka to Roma seems to be nailed on at this point. After Jordan Henderson had issues with his contract at Liverpool, it seems like he could be joining Arsenal in the coming summer. Rumors now claim that Tottenham are head of Arsenal and targeting none other than Tammy Abraham. The, the Times and the Daily Mail have reported that Arsenal are prepared to bid 32 million pounds for Aaron Ramsdale formerly from Bournemouth and now playing for Sheffield United that recently got relegated. Ben White to Arsenal is pretty much done and dusted. We're just waiting for them to cross the I's, dot the T's, and for him to come back from his vacation so he can then be joining his new team, the Arsenal. Reports out of Manchester United that Bruno Fernandes wants Ruben Neves to be his sideman in the midfield of Manchester United. And it looks like Ruben Neves could be joining Manchester United over the beloved Arsenal. Rumors say that Arsenal are readying a second bid for Manuel Locatelli, supposedly. But yeah, there's also more things that we got to get into. So guys, for the rest of the video, come join us on my YouTube ch uh, channel, EGTV. The link should be on the Facebook and on Twitter. So come join us there for the rest of the video. Now, big up to everybody who's already watching. Big up to everybody who's already subscribed. Appreciate all you guys. But yeah, first things, the first story today that we're going to talk about is Lacazette. Right, And if you guys don't already know, Lacazette has been rumored to move away from the club to Atletico Madrid. Now, with the whole situation with Lacazette possibly leaving to Atletico Madrid, what this what could this mean for the club? What could this mean for the player? What could this mean for us? Diego Simeone has been a, has been looking at Lacazette 
even before he joined Arsenal. And he had a move already fixed to leave Leon to go to Atletico Madrid before Arsenal and the subsequent uh, ban happened with Atletico Madrid. And now it looks like Diego Simeone is back in for him. Diego Simeone might be interested in getting him on a cheap deal since he has one year left on his deal after this year, uh, at the end of this year. So that means we, they could get him for as low as 20 million euros, not even pounds, 20 million euros. That's what the reported fee is. Big up Gunnar Express. How you doing, bro? But yeah, so this is this is the situation with Lacazette. This is the first story on today's docket. I want to ask you guys, what do you guys think about the possibility that he could be going to Atletico Madrid? I think this is great business for the club. If the club can sell Lacazette and get some return on investment, this would be better than letting guys like Ozo and all Aaron Rams, Aaron Ramsey and uh, Alexis Sanchez leave on a free. We've done this too many times. We need to get out of the habit of letting players leave on a free and we need to get some sort of return on investment. And this is a beginning to something I would say, you know, is maybe a little bit better than what we used to do. Oh, shit. I got a Leicester fan here. Hello, Yo. bro. Yo, what are you doing, man? How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. How old are you, by the way? I, 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 I can see Madison not going. I don't think Madison's happy at Leicester. Yeah, do you think Madison's staying? Definitely so, yeah. Yo, man, you know what? I've been meaning to have you on it for a while. But, okay, let's just get to the Madison part then right now. Since you're here, you're, you're, you're a Leicester fan. So the reports came coming out of Le uh, Leicester today. Uh, going, If you go into the description, you can check all the way down at um, section number 14. It says, James Madison to Arsenal is not happening, according to Dean Jones. Leicester won't sell Madison this summer. Then you got Chris Wheatley saying reports out of – uh, Leicester, that they are, they are still, they're, they're happy to keep James Madison and James Madison. If he does not go, Odegaard is still on the uh, Arsenal's option. One of Arsenal's options, Odegaard might be leaving, and a possible plan B would be Mateus Pereira. So at at the moment, it looks like Arsenal's preparing to miss out on James Madison, and we're also preparing plan Bs. So you might be right. We might miss out on James Madison. It might, it might not be the guy that we get. But hey, what do you, what do you, why do you think Leicester wants to keep him at this point? Because I heard he he's on the fringes of the team. Because um, because he's um, because he's a he's our like a like Barley's been as well. Like he's good. We got a good team as well. Leicester got a good team. There you go. So, and how long have you been a Leicester fan, man? Man, right, since uh, two years old. There you go. I am I am my guy. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it, bro. Silver Fox. I'll speak to you. I'll get you on more often. Um, give me a message on Twitter, okay? Yeah. And, and also, and so I'm going to road to 300. Like and subscribe my channel. Well, the video been out for um, about an hour. Go have a check out. Check out. There you go. Guys, go, go check out your channel. Your channel's called The Silver Fox, right? Yeah. There you go. My guy. Have a good one, bro. Have you seen any less than you? <laughs> I, I don't know what he was saying, but big up to him. Um, Aslan's here. We got Mahdeen here. We got Gunnar Express here. So, yeah, let's go back to this. We'll talk about James Madison news in a bit, but let's go back to the the, the Lacazette and Abamyang uh, news. So, Lacazette possibly leaving now means Tammy Abraham could come in as a possible replacement. That's who the club has been lining up today. But there's also been reports today that there's a new target for the club that there's a new possible uh, attacking target. Now, do you guys believe this for a second, Lautaro Martinez to Arsenal? I, 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 just, I just find it hard to believe. But guys, big up to everybody watching on Twitter. Come join us now on YouTube for the rest of the video if you can. Big up to everybody watching on, you, uh, on Facebook. Come join us on the rest of the video on YouTube also. Now, Azan, Guna Express, everybody here. I find it hard to believe that this is a real, this is a real story. I find it hard to believe that this that there's any truth to Lautaro Martinez coming to Arsenal. So I'm going to I'm going to give you guys the floor after I read the report. The report says Arsenal are interested in Lautaro Martinez. It says Edu specifically is is aiming high in the market to get closer to the top 4 finish and one of the one of the targets that they prefer is Inter Milan's uh Lautaro Martinez. He has not extended his contract. He still has two years left on his on his running contract at Inter Milan. Now, I does this sound like a dream, or what do you guys think, guys? You there? Yeah. Uh, first of all, big Abigail, I hope you're fine, and the panel also. Uh, I hope that you uh, you're doing well. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, for me, if I talk about, uh, if we get him, to be honest, I will be very happy, of course. But I don't think, I don't think this will happen for me, in in, uh, in my opinion. Mm. Also, we have to get uh, the positions that we we must get. You know, we need a right back. We uh, we need a central midfielder. We need uh, Cam. So so we need uh, uh, another positions that we have to get before uh, before getting uh, a striker. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What about what about you, um, ML two? Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, I think it it's a dream signing for Arsenal as of now, and I think these type of rumors or news just send a fan base in a debating or like in like on Twitter or social media just because there'll be few more reports saying Arsenal are preparing a bit or interest in Lotta Martinez and they'll probably end up signing Tammy Abraham and then who fan is where's the ambition of the club. But the point is you were never gonna get him at the first place. So yeah, that's what I think about this deal. I I don't think that's a strong, you know, motive to it. Okay. Gonna express uh, yeah, we're not getting him. If the guy was to leave after winning the Scudetto, being back in the Champions League, then he has no ambition. So we're not going to get him. Interesting. Azan, you're on the same. You're on the same docket. This is fake news. We're not going to get him. Yeah, man, this is uh, impossible. Um, I don't believe this one bit. Yeah. Let's keep it simple. People in the chat also saying they don't believe it. A lot of people are saying, you know what? They're a lot of people are saying they're using us as a, as a tool to try to get their contract sorted. So that could be it also. That could just be it, right? There, it looks like it could be another situation where they're just using the contract to be sorted. Hector Bellerin, we're not going to speak on. But there's an issue with Joe Willick, guys. Guess what's going on with Joe Willick? It looks like Newcastle are now confident that the, that the loan deal will be, solid, will be secured before, before the window is closed. It looks like Joe Willick does not want to sit around and, and be in the reserves for Arsenal. He wants guaranteed minutes. Arsenal cannot secure him guaranteed minutes. So what they're going to do is they're going to give him another subsequent loan to Newcastle. And I know Aslan's take on this, so I'm going to get you uh, your opinion on this first. Aslan, your worst fears look like they're coming to reality. Joe Willick looks like he most likely will actually be going on loan. It's no, it's no, and this is no longer just like a pipe dream for Newcastle. They're gonna get, a, they're gonna get their guy on loan without having to pay a penny. Um, is the um, is there any like uh, details on? No, um, no details on buy options, loan options. Right. To- okay. So it's just straight out loan at the moment. No, I mean, moment. yeah. Look, um, if it's another loan, uh, I'm fine with that. I mean. To my knowledge, like he's still like how many years does he have remaining on his current contract? Does anyone know? I think it's twenty twenty three or twenty twenty four, depending on when. He okay, has. so if he's still got two, three years left, like I'm, I'm perfectly fine with him going out on loan because look, um, you know, uh, through throughout our discussions uh, on the spaces, like you know, obviously game time is going to be limited uh, due to us not being in Europe. So him going out on loan and. Um, you know, doing uh, what he done in the last six months at Newcastle, yeah, uh, I think it will be a good move for him. Um, and to basically uh, elevate and progress even further. Uh, I just hope that you know, if he does have a good season, uh, this would be solid uh, proof uh, that you know he can come to Arsenal and if given a fair chance. Um, he can do the same for us. So fair. yeah, all the best to him. Fair, fair point. Um, ML two, what do you? Th- what's your take on Joe Willick being sent out on loan? Because in my opinion, I feel like it's a good thing that he's getting game time. But of course, I would love if he was given a chance at Arsenal. But I don't think he's going to get given a chance under Arteta. I think I'm on the same boat. Like it's a good thing that he goes on loan. But the problem I have here is if Arsenal don't end up signing any midfield player up the pitch like a 10, like a Madison or what, even if it's a 38-game season, 
I don't think Arsenal have enough depth, and I think he deserves a chance after what he done at Newcastle. People are questioning him so, for you know decision making and his goal scoring opportunities. So I think okay. he deserves a chance if we don't sign a Madison or Alvar. Okay, ML two, love and respect, bro. But your audio is kind of cracking today, so I'm gonna have to take you out. Okay. No. I right, uh, Gunnar Express. Uh, I think it's silly. I don't, obviously, I don't think he's good enough to play for Arsenal. But I don't see the point of loaning him out. It's obvious that we don't want to play him. Otherwise, we'd play him. So, just sell him. Because for me, what I worry about is he goes on loan to Newcastle, drops a stinker. Because, again, I, I think this is a purple patch. I don't think he's actually this good. Um, he drops that stinker. His value goes down and then we're stuck with him. And then, then, obviously, the next season when we want to sell him, we can only sell him for 10, 15 mil. And then we'll look back on it and say, oh, but we could have got £30 million last year. So for me, I want to sell him. I want £30 million at least. Um, he's obviously not going to play under Arteta. Arteta don't want to play him. And sending him out on loan again for a full season, I just don't see the point personally. So I think it's silly. Um, and we should just sell him. There you go. Gunnar Express has spoken. Personally, guys, I want to ask people in the chat, if you had a choice between sell or loan this season in Joe Willick? Because it doesn't seem like we're keeping him. Would you sell him or would you loan him out? Because I, I think loaning him out doesn't hurt. We still have him under contract for a long time period. Keeping him for one more year, see if he can get into the team once we have a European competition next season, hopefully. That, that to me is makes a lot of sense. And also, it's going into a summer where he wants to, he wants to get as much game time as possible Maybe we can get him. Maybe we can get him even a bigger move next summer. Uh, that's my that's my Egal, thought. Problem. Egal, uh, bro, the thing is, uh, if we don't get a, a midfielder, if we, if we don't get Awa or any other midfielder, and we loan uh, Willock, that will be you know that will be you know a mistake because the guy has already proven it in the in the prem. So maybe if Arsenal are ready to get a midfielder like Awa or any other. Maybe I can say okay, maybe loan him or sell him. Yes, but if you don't get a midfielder and and uh, we sell uh, or loan him, I think it it will be a mistake to be honest for me. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I hear that. Um, before we go any further, guys, do me a favor, smash that like button and let me know right now. Would you rather sell or keep Joe Willock? Uh, Aslan said he would rather have kept him, right, and and loan. Uh, or or kept him at the club. Gunnar Express said he would rather have sold him. Mahdeen, you, uh, you're kind of mixed. Which one is it for you? For me, I say keep. Because okay. he, he has already proven it. Okay. Okay. And then some people in the chat are saying, sell Joe Willig, sell, sell, loan, uh, no sentiment, sell, sell, sell. Seems like a lot of people agree with you, Gunnar Express. Um, people are saying, Awar in. Now, I don't think we're going to get anywhere near 30 million because this is not a guys, this is this is a buyer's market. It's not a seller's market. If you're buying players, you're going to get them on cheaper than you would have gotten them before COVID. But if you're selling players, you're not going to make that much money unless it's Holland or Mbappe or somebody like that. You're not going to make top end money. Look at Jaden Sancho. He went for the same money as Pepe uh, as Pat uh, as Pepe. No way Jaden Sancho is worth the same money as Pepe was when he was when he when we bought him. Realistically, Pepe was not as proven as Jaden Sancho is. Just goes to show you. But yeah, enough about that. We got somebody else here. Mo. How's it going, mate? You're right. I'm doing good, man. You're a United fan. What do you what do you got to say today, man? Um about Arsenal. I mean, we we united with Sancho Varane. If you can get another CDM, we're talking. We took we took we're not talking title, but at last we're starting to close the gap now. We're starting to learn how Liverpool are City are doing it. Um and Chelsea, and there's some some sort of structure now. You know, before it was like, buy this, buy that, buy this, who's available? Now, there's some sort of fruit process, you know. They, they go for targets that, let's just say if we never got Sancho, we got another right side in mid, uh, midfielder anyone. But no, it's like Oli's like picking his targets and, and then and they're looking to, they have a strategy now, you know. Um, they got Sancho, which we needed. We're getting Varane okay. next to Maguire. And then if we get, in, get another CDM, um, that should be good. As for Arsenal, let me let me just let me just uh, stop you right there for a second. Yeah. You know how there's been four centre backs uh, purchased by Liverpool uh, or going to be purchased by Premier League clubs. You yeah. Varane, 
you got Jules Conde, you got um, Ben White, and you got Kanate, right? Yeah. So the situation with each one is quite different. Arsenal need a, need a homegrown player, in my opinion. Manchester United just need a, a, a ready-made uh, player to come in. Chelsea... Mm. Chelsea need somebody who can play in a back three or a back four or, and be versatile, similar to well, similar to what they already have with um, Cesar Aspilicueta. And Liverpool just went out and got one of the best up-and-coming in Kanate. So when we're looking at these four, I get that Manchester United want to laugh at everybody for us paying the same No, 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 no. We're not laughing. I saw to be, sorry to interrupt you, Gal. Yeah. I saw, look, out of all those four, if I couldn't get Varane, I'll take Kunde. If I couldn't take Kunde, I'll get Kanate. If I couldn't get Kanate, I'll get Ben White. Ben White, I've, I've seen so many players that Ben White, they're not good. They, you, you know, Thank you, overpriced. finally. Someone they, finally saying it, man. Ben White, ben White's not going to come in and... I mean, I've seen him at Brighton. What Arsenal need... I think, you know what, who Arsenal should have got? They should have got Kunde or they should have got Kanate. That would be perfect for them. Ben yeah. White, what's Ben White going to come and do? You've seen him for two years at Brighton. Yeah, I hear that. So you don't. So you don't rate Ben White? No, no. Because again, don't forget, we we were linked with him for fifty million. Well, if you're gonna spend fifty million on Ben White, why not just get ten million? Why not just get ten million pounds from somewhere and just get Jules Kunde? Listen, I don't rate Jules Kunde as well, high better as Ben White. People, I, and I'm not saying he's not better than Ben White. He's but better, the, no, he's better than Ben White. He's, he's not even no, no, no. The, the thing about Ben White is the thing about Ben White is Arsenal Football Club are in a situation where they need homegrown talent. Arsenal Football Club is in a situation where they need players to that that can that can come in and don't need to that, don't need to adjust. He'll hit the but, ground running. So so so, so what it sounds to me like now is Arsenal trying to copy what Man United trying to do, like with Mason Greenwood. Where you know we're trying to push through the youngsters in. Greenwood, um, who else? Um, Ilanga. So we're trying to do that. But with Arsenal, I get the youngster bit, and he is fantastic to push through the youngsters. But you have to get those players in, like a Jules Kunde, that will get everyone excited. Ben White, if, Ben White is not going to get Arsenal excited, are they? The players, if Jules Kunde came into Arsenal, I'm telling you that everyone would, you know, all right, cool. You, you guys got Kunde. Okay, I see what you're doing. But Ben White, people are looking at him. Ben White. No, Arsenal? but the thing is, you know what? Ben White might surprise some people. I, I want to get some takes on the other people because I know Gunnar expressed his take on this. Yeah. Uh, I don't want. I'm not trying to compare the players, guys. Don't for one second think I'm trying to compare the. No, three I get. I get. I get what I'm you're comparing from the situations. Yeah. Chelsea just won the Champions League. They went out and got one of the biggest up and coming French players. Liverpool just won the Champions League in the league. They went and got one of the most uh, uh, proven, uh, one of the most ready made youngsters from from Leipzig. Right. Mm -hmm. You got Manchester United went and got a World Cup winner, a Champions League winner, and Varane. Yeah. Arsenal went and got Ben White. The joke is Arsenal went and got Ben White. The thing is, stop writing him off. Stop making him seem like no he's one, no one, look, player. no one's writing Ben White off. Don't forget, we was look, Magnet was was linked with Ben White, and I think we were seriously linked with him. So I, you know what I did? I did my research on him, and I look at his game, and I'm thinking, he's he's not a defender that's gonna win you Champions League and league titles. He might be an okay defender, but at the moment, okay is not enough to get into top four now. You're gonna to have to have a top top squad to get to top four because you've got Liverpool, Chelsea, um, City. I mean, what fourth place is gonna be very hard to get. Chelsea look good; they're gonna go and buy players. City will do what City do. City, City are starting to make moves now, and Liverpool have got um, Kanate. I think Kanate Arsenal should have tried and get Kanate. Kanate is a brilliant player. Yeah, but this guy said it here himself. Uh, writing off Ben White is ridiculous. I do think he no, will... No, we're not writing no, off Ben No, one second though. Why can't we write him off? Because you, you just you shouldn't write off players before they come into your team. And no, also... No, no, but why? He is, he, is a upcoming, he is an upcoming player. He's young. He still has scope to become a lot better. He, his valuation, I get it, is too much. His valuation is too much. But when you're writing off players, I don't personally... I feel like it's wrong to write off anybody. I mean, that makes no sense to go because there's certain players that get written off because they're trash. Elaborate. Like, what do you mean? Players can be written off if they're rubbish players. Like Xhaka, he's been written off. Bellerin's been written off. They ain't good okay. No, but when they signed, obviously they weren't write-offs. Yeah, but the thing with Ben White is a go, Marcelo Bielsa, 
didn't want to pay £30 million to get him, yet we're now spending £50 million to get him. Marcelo Bielsa didn't think he was worth £30 million, yet apparently he was this brilliant, world-class, amazing centre-back for Leeds. When we yet were one linked... The, yet one of the best managers in the Premier League in terms of tactical know-it-all in Marcelo Bielsa said he's not worth £30 million. When we, link, when, when, when we were linked with Ben White, my United, I was, my reaction was, you're having a laugh, aren't you? What is no. this about is Brexit FC players where you keep on getting breached Ben? No, you don't need to get Ben White. I, I looked at Ben White. He's just an average player at best. he probably have a good game here and there, but that you know, that's not a partner to partner Harry Maguire. Cause that is, Bro, is, why are you making Ben, ben White as if he's that years old? But he's, but he's not good he, enough. He's not good enough. He yeah, is good you're... enough, bro. Just no, wait. Not. Let the season start. Man. Let the start. No, 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 no. He has no, already... No, okay, no, 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 no. Listen, we listen, were listen, listen. My United were linked... Were, were li Manchester United were linked with Ben I get White. You. I've seen him for two years. He's an average player. If you want me to okay. lie to you, say he's okay, a good wait, player. Wait. Okay, just because he uh, he's playing for Brighton... No, but that's not it, though. What about Bissouma, then? What about Bissouma for Bayern? Bissouma plays for Bayern. How can we, we all rate Bissouma? Bissouma's a top, top player. Bro, for me, Ben White, it will work out. Just how? let the season... No, 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 one second, though. Mohadeen, I want to ask, though, because you're saying that we have to wait. You're telling us we're not allowed to criticise him because we have to wait. But I want yeah. you to tell me right here, right now, what reasons he will succeed. Instead of just saying, wait until he proves you wrong. <laughs> okay, okay that's, okay. that's not enough evidence for me not to Okay, not let wait. me tell you. He was... Uh, they loaned him to Leeds. All the fans, you know, all, all Leeds fans... What were they saying? They were all saying that uh, we, wish, uh, we want uh, him. They want him uh, to uh, to sign him. They yeah, champ championship, championship. Yeah. No, no oh at, that time, at that time he was upcoming. Bro. That time guys, he was upcoming. guys, I gotta move this topic on. But personally, I feel like we are gonna have this Ben White conversation when he signs again. So, so it's understandable that we have this conversation right now, anyways. But there's a there's this player that we've been linked to, right? I'm, and I'm gonna. I'm just gonna give you guys some information about him in case you don't know who he is, right? So he is 18. Guna Express. I don't know what's going on in the background. Could you turn that down, please? Okay. So there's an 18 year old. Uh, he's currently 18 years old. He's Portuguese international. How do you pronounce his name? Uh, let me. Let me just get it up. Machoy Jallo. Machoy Jallo. Last year, uh, last year he played only three games in 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 the league. The year before that, he played three games. He's a prospect. He's a young player. He's Portuguese. He's 18 years old. Arsenal are linked to to buying this 18 year old for available for one million pounds. I don't know exactly what why anything about him. All I know is he's a winger, he, and and he would. And he hasn't played much first team minutes in uh, in in the Portuguese league. He hasn't played much in, in thing. He's also been tracked by Juventus. This is at Newcastle, Everton, and Southampton. So this is just another one of those guys that we've been linked to. Just want to let you guys know about him. Do, do, does he play for Paco de Ferreira? He plays for. He, I think. I think he no. He plays for. What's his team called? I don't even know this team. Uh, Portuguese, Portuguese uh, club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays yeah, for Paco Ferreira. Yeah. Okay. Pecos Ferreira. Yeah, that's the team, right? Yeah. What yeah. What position is he? He majority of the time he plays on the right wing, he's and he's played okay. and he's played as an attacking midfielder. But he's okay. honestly he's a youngster for the future. He's not somebody we're gonna be expecting much from. He's just gonna go on straight into the academy. Probably. I mean, if I may, if I may ask a question. What yeah. is Arsenal's transfer policy this year? I mean, what are they trying to do? Because with United, I, I've been looking at it. It looks like we've got a new football director. We've got Dan Fletcher in there. This is, looks like a plan. And they've got a plan of what they want to do. With Arsenal, I've not been focusing on Arsenal that much because with the Euros and whatnot. But what, what, what is the strategy with Arsenal now? Where are they trying to strengthen? Who are they being linked with? I know Ben White, but strikers, midfielders. I mean, where does where he want to improve Buy shit players and hope they come good. No, right now, right now, it's been it's been all over the place. Honestly, we we can't lie. It's been it's been very much all over the place. But one thing, one thing we do, one thing we do know is we need to get rid of guys like Shaka, Hector Bellerin off our books before we can bring in a backup right back or a backup central midfielder. That's the problem. Yeah, that's easier said than done because they're on big money and. With United, we've got a couple of players as well that are, are on like good decent that we can't get rid of. Phil Jones being one of them. That's how you do it. How you doing? I'm good, man. What are you doing? 
I want to talk to you about this next right back target. Giovanni Di Lorenzo from Napoli is on Arsenal's radar, guys. What are we saying about Giovanni Di Lorenzo? Do we do we know much about him besides I watched him in the Euros? I thought he was good. His agent, his agent has said or uh, has spoken to Arsenal. I don't know how realistic it is of a signing, but yo, Mo, thanks for coming on, bro. I'm just gonna take you. Oh, it's pleasure, bro. Take care. All right, peace. But yeah, so what are you guys saying about this signing right here? We, I don't want to. I don't know anything about him. I can't comment on him. Bro, egal, egal, egal. Wait, for, uh, how uh, how much is his uh, price? First of all, uh, it looks like it would be around twenty-five million. Remember that uh, he was a uh, big bad of the Italy, Italy winning the Euros. He was playing very well. Also, he barely played. What do you mean, guys? He would be twenty-seven. He would be twenty-five million. He's twenty-seven years old. He barely played. He played. What do you mean? He barely played. He played six games in the Euros. Right? Yeah. He played. How, did he play? Yeah, yeah, cool. But uh, bro, he was not a big part of their winning team. Bro, he literally played. He played. Six he, games. played he played right wing back. So he's not even playing a right back for a starter. So like, what do you mean, bro? What do you mean? He was playing yeah. at the US, yeah. bro. Okay. Yes, so, he was playing right wing back. How many games did he play right back? Is what I said. Okay. He played why, zero why are we, games. Why, at right why are we arguing back. over this? Just be like, do you would you take him? Yes or no? No. For me, yes. we're buying cheap yes. players, bro. We need a starting right back, and we're buying we're, we're buying some shitter from Napoli. Like, oh, like, bro, we're just like, I don't get it, man. It's just, it's just a link, man. It's not. It's not like no, you... no, no. I know it's cool, but, but what what other right backs are we linked to? What what world class? We've been linked really to Max right Perrins we linked twenty million. To? He, he's not that great either. Okay, he's not going to massively improve us. Wow. No, but is he mass? Is he going to massively think, improve I us? Think, I think a lot of right backs massively improve us. No, but what you have to realize is, guys, there's been there's a reason why we're constantly linked to right backs who play as natural left uh, right wing backs. We, we haven't really been linked to too many actual out and out right backs. Think about it. Majority of the players that we've been looked at, we've been looking at uh, Dumfries, uh, Lamptey, Aarons, Hakimi, De Lorenzo, all these right backs that we've been talking about. None of them actually play as out and out right backs in a back four. It makes me think we are trying to get an inverted right back to play as a right wing back when we're attacking, but when we're defending to be just a right back. So we're not going to be playing a natural uh, a natural system. Or is it an indication that uh, going into next season, Arteta wants to play uh, a back three, a three four three formation? It could be, it could be. But why would we get rid of so many center backs if we want to play back three? No, but like, no, but who else are we looking to get rid of? I mean, uh, we've already loaned out Mavropanos and uh, Saliba. Who else are we looking to get rid of? From our we, got rid of we got rid of David Luiz, we got rid of uh, Socrates, we got rid of Mustafi, we got rid of at least, uh, and we got rid of academy center backs. We've gotten rid of so many center backs, it makes me think we're still going to play a back four, but. We want the the we want that right back to be so good attacking wise. We don't want our, our right back coming in to be a good defender only and not be able to attack. De, De Lorenzo is not good attacking wise. De Lorenzo neither, is neither, really neither neither really is Max Aaron's. They're not really attack. If you want an attacking right back, you go and get Tariq Lanti. I'm pretty sure De Lorenzo is really good attacking wise. His crossing is not bad, uh, but he is really good at defending. I don't know his scan report fully, but what I can tell you is he. From what I've seen, he looks like a, a really good right back. <coughs> Defensively, I don't know too much about him, but what, from statistically, you can see that he's that he's a good right back going forward. Hey, you he's, see, 20, um, he's you twenty-seven see. years old. We don't want we don't want too many old players in our team. But he's just in his prime right now. Are we are we sure we should be sticking our nose up to a De Lorenzo? Yep, say it good enough. No, um, no, it's it's uh, well known that. Um, you know, as an Arsenal fan base on social media, we do, but uh, we're quite active, right? Uh, or, or very active, um, uh, to be accurate. Um, can we not just at Arsenal every day and suggest uh, Raidul Baku, man? And, uh, you know, because obviously, you know, Arsenal have a uh, social media team. Uh, maybe if we start at an Arsenal and suggesting Raidul Baku, or I don't know, like any other, which uh, any other decent right back, which anyone else wants to bring to the table, maybe uh, maybe we would start seeing uh, more more links or better links for a right back because I don't know, like the right back situation. But 
I'm not feeling confident whatsoever. Like, I just feel that we're not going to bring in anyone at this moment in time. I feel, uh, I feel we're going to get rid of Bellerin, possibly uh, Ainsley Maitland-Niles, and go into the new season and just have uh, Chambers and uh, Cedric Suarez. I'll be honest with you. Interesting. And that's quite worrying. Uh, Cash, what do you think about that? Oh, it's a difficult one. It's a very difficult one. I think because we're struggling to get with these players, I know people are saying it's an underwhelming chance of winner because we're struggling to move players. But we have to remember a lot of these players are on huge contracts that a lot of clubs are going to frown upon. It's okay saying you want to get rid of those players. You need someone who's willing to take those players. And as you've seen with the likes of um, Runnison or whatever, they're probably looking at his wages and thinking, right, we don't really want to pay that. You know what I mean? Um, you've got the likes of, ooh, mate, easy mate and now I think he'll be gone. I think that's one player that will be gone. Um, Bellerin will be struggling to actually get him to books. Um, Shaka now, I think Shaka will be gone. It's just a matter of... The, both clubs compromise, and as I said, like, there's lots of fans saying, "Oh, you should be getting more for him." I don't believe we should be selling Shaka for less than 20 mil per se. There's some fans that will say, "You know what? Just sell him for 15." And I don't really think he can really do business like that. So when you do business like that, then every other club's going to expect you when you come to the table try to sell another player. They're going to try and bite your hand off as well. So that's, it's a bit of a difficult one. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, it uh, the right back situation is a mess, but it's 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 starting to seem like the goalkeeper situation is even more of a mess. If you guys don't know, we've been linked to Aaron Ramsdale, we've been linked to Sam Johnston, we've been linked to so many goalkeepers, and now we're back in once again for Neto of Barcelona. So the situation with Neto of Barcelona is, if you guys don't already know, over the past couple of days, uh, Neto has has a uh, uh, possible deal to Arsenal. It looks like it's been it's been. Uh, the rumors have cooled, and it, there, there hasn't been really any talks about this recently. So I don't think Arsenal are any longer looking at Neto as an option. It looks like they're going to be more focused on Aaron Ramsdale and a homegrown goalkeeper to back up Leno. And so the, it looks like they, they've completely stopped talking to Neto's representatives in regards to a possible deal from him to go from Barcelona to Arsenal. So we won't be seeing Neto at Arsenal anytime soon. I know some of you guys, last time we spoke, Gunnar Express, you said you prefer him over Leno. Huh? You said you wanted Neto over Leno last time, correct? No, I didn't say that. I'd have him as a backup, but not as a star. Okay. Enough said. So, yeah. So, enough about that guy, then. Do you guys, do you guys, <coughs> who do you prefer? Because we spoke about this yesterday, Leno or... Uh, Ramsdale and and thing, but at this moment it looks like Aaron Ramsdale is is the the main guy Arsenal's after, and I know it's frustrating and underwhelming, but can you see why Arsenal want the 22 year old goalkeeper at, at Brighton? I mean, not Brighton, she, uh, Sheffield United. Because we're stupid. <laughs> That's it. There's there's no there's no there's no explaining it. You can say what you want about homegrown or the young, you know, his age. I don't care. It's a stupid signing, no matter what no amount of money we pay for him. Okay, how much? How much is he worth to you? Nothing. He's just not worth it at all. No amount of money. So no amount of money, you you wouldn't nothing at all. No, nope, I won't buy him for anything. Cash, what about you? Um, listen, I'm not gonna jump on a bandwagon and say he's an absolutely horrendous keeper. I think he's at a good age. Despite what people say, oh, he's faced how many shots and he's conceded how many goals, I think that's a reality of who you play for and the reality of your team. It's not Defending is not just down to a goalkeeper. Yes, the goalkeeper is there to stop the shots, but also your defenders are there to stop the opportunities. And if your defenders are not stopping opportunities, you're going to face shots. It's the same as when we had Emery. How many shots was Leno facing? You know what I mean? I think he's a good keeper. I think... He's got a lot of development to do. Keepers don't tend to peak until they're in their late 20s anyway. I think that's what Arsenal's looking at. They're looking at a keeper who can come in and be back up, um, hopefully improve. And if it doesn't work out, you can sell him on because we need to stop going off this policy where you buy a player and you can't sell him on for much. I think as an English keeper, you'll always be able to make a profit off Lonsdale. But saying that, 
I would not pay 30 mil for him. As I've said before many times in the group chat, if you could get him for 10 to 15 million, I'll take him because you're always going to make a profit back off that. But we all know in reality that's not going to happen because Sheffield United paid, what, 20 mil for him? They're not looking to take a loss. So the best thing to do for Arsenal is to walk away from this deal and find other solutions. Mm. Okay, um, I'm gonna go to Mahdeen. Mahdeen, how much do you think he's worth? But before I go to you, people, smash that like button. We're only at 50 likes, and we got over almost 200 people in here. Let's get that like to at least 60, and we can we can we can make it, we can keep it moving. But yo, Mahdeen, how much do you think Aaron Ramsdale is worth? Yo, bro, for me, I agree with what Ghana expressed. Nothing, bro, nothing at all. For me, I don't want him, man. Nothing at all. <laughs> okay. Um, if you had to put a price, how much would you put him for? Nothing, nothing, man. I don't want a, a, a pack of quavers, mate. Okay, okay. Uh, Aslan, what about you? Um, look, for me, um, if we're gonna bring in a backup keeper, we shouldn't like we should be paying nowhere uh, near uh, like over ten mil. Like five to ten mil for me is a suitable price. Uh, and if we are going to go out and pay 30-odd million, for me, that would be an indication that that's going to be a number one keeper. No way are we going to fork out that much money um, in order for that player to come in and be back up. That's, uh, that's impossible. I don't see any of the other um, clubs in the top six moving like that. Um, and it will be very strange for Arsenal to do so. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, this Ramsdale guy, personally, I don't want him. Um, look, I get there's this whole um, English quota, homegrown quota that we need to meet because potentially we're going to be move, moving on quite a few of our um, academy graduates or English talent uh, we have currently within our squad. Um, I just, I just feel there's uh, better options out there, to be honest. Um, but I mean, look, what, what do we know of this Leno situation? Because again, you know, like we're not hearing any reports, like, uh, like all those conflicting reports that we're hearing uh, at the start of the transfer window, they've all kind of died down because some reports were suggesting that he wants to leave. Some reports were suggesting that he's not going anywhere. But I'm not hearing any other reports at all now. So I think with, with, the, with the Leno situation, he might want to leave, but it's, it's about the teams that are going to come in for him. Like I've said, like Leno, he's a good shot stopper, but I don't rate him highly. And he might be thinking he's really big bollocks who's going to go and get, a, I don't know, a Dortmund move or something like that. But I can't see it happening. I never believed that he was going to leave this season. I thought maybe we'll be able to get Onana in, but I can understand why the club haven't done it. I always expected Leno to stay at least one more season before we moved on. Okay. Um, Ariola, is he a good show? Yes. What, the, what, what, the ex-PSG keeper that was at Crystal Palace? Yeah. Fulham. No, at Fulham. Fulham. Oh, Fulham, sorry, my bad, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he's a good shout. Uh, what, like, to bring in as a backup? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, he's a good shout. Or, or like, you know, like, um, like I'm only uh, suggesting this uh, if we're going to, like, entertain for a second that, uh, you know, the possibility of Leno leaving. What about Kalo Navas at PSG? We were linked to him. We were linked to Kalo Navas. Uh, you know, uh, like... Like I feel in the last like recent few years, he's been disrespected as a as a keeper, you know, uh, in the way that you know he was treated at Madrid with them uh, bringing in uh, what's his name from Chelsea, the Belgian guy. Courtois. Oh, that's it. Sorry, my mind went blank there for a second. That's and then person, and then now you know them bringing in Donor uh, Donnarumma. <laughs> Look, he's obviously PSG's number one going into next season. And, you know, uh, a player of his calibre, um, is he going to want to stay? Uh, I don't think he will. Like, I think, you know, the guy is a winner. Um, but then, you know, can we attract him with not having any European football? That's another question to be asked. But, yeah, look, I mean, look, 
there's options out there. Look, for me, I, me personally, I would be happy sticking with Leno for another season. Us identifying a backup keeper better than obviously Ronison, as long as we can identify the midfield positions and the right back spot. Uh, Yo, I'd be happy with that with Leno going into next season. Jonathan's here. I'm going to get him to say the last piece on the goalkeeper. Then we're going to move on because we've got a bunch of stuff to talk about around Madison and Odegaard. And there's been some havoc going on Twitter we needed to discuss. Jonathan, go ahead. Uh, what's up, bro? Um, um, question. Why do, um, why do you think that Arsenal did not acquire Matt Ryan? Because I think he would have been the perfect backup who may have challenge Leonard uh, I think he got first team opportunities at uh with that and he got injured actually so he's not even gonna start now. Oh um personally personally on the um Ramsday situation I'm I'm not gonna say I'm not a big fan because I do not watch Sheffield United so I'm not even sure if he's a good or not good enough goalkeeper so hopefully if us for me I'm not going to pay 30 million for a backup. And I don't believe that Ramsdale is better than Leno. And I believe that... I think the problem is that Arsenal want an English goalkeeper. That is the main reason. Maybe that's why they're trying to pursue Ramsdale. Because of the English quota right now. Which, so, one, would you, which one would you take? Ramsdale or Johnson? The cheaper one. <laughs> there you go. There you yeah. go. All right, bro. I'm, gonna be, I'm getting too much feedback from your from your mic, so I'm just going to have to take you out, Jonathan. But thanks for coming on, man. Okay, so the next topic, guys, is if you guys haven't already heard, Arsenal are going to sign Ben White, Manchester United are going to sign uh, Varane, and then this comes up. Ben White will turn out to be a better investment than Rafael Varane. Thoughts? No. Yeah, it's just uh, look, it's just people on Twitter with uh, big followings, uh, you know, playing this Twitter game. Look, at the end of the day, uh, this guy can tweet what he wants. It's his account. Um, but look, I just don't feel the need of uh, gassing up a player or uh, criticizing a player when we haven't seen them play uh, for the shirt yet. You know, like like let's see him. Uh, for the next like first 10 games for us to get like a rough idea of what he's about you know but like to make these type of bold statements I don't know man I just feel unnecessary I think it depends on how you read that that tweet to be honest I don't think it's necessarily saying that Ben White is better than Vibram because we all know that's not true but I think he's just going off the fact of Man United investing and not actually winning anything. I think that's that's more the vibe he's going off. I don't know. Yeah. Both players, I think Arsenal fans need to focus on their transfer, leave other clubs to focus on theirs. I don't get the point of this competing and giving our opinions on other um, clubs' players. Like They're not playing for us. It doesn't matter to us. It's not going to help us. Let's focus on what we're signing and what we're trying to do. For me, I think a lot of people are looking down on Ben White. I believe Ben White is the sort of player that we will probably sign. And if we don't actually push on within the next year or so, you end up losing a player like Ben White. That's how far I think this guy can go. Mm. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, look I hear uh, what you're saying, Cash, because obviously, look, Varane White is in his late 20s. Uh, uh, ben White is in his early 20s. Um, I mean, I don't know like how much he's going to be earning uh, for the next, what, four or five years at uh, Madrid. But, yeah, it's probably uh, down to, uh, you know, this tweet is more about the financial side. Um, but, I mean, look, uh, Varane, um, he's a winner, man. Look, he's been at Real Madrid. He's been very successful there. Mm-hmm. Um, he's definitely uh, a defender of a high quality. Uh, but, look, I'm, 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 I'm not judging Ben White. Uh, I'm not saying he's good or shit. Uh, I just want to see what he's like uh, playing in the Arsenal shirt, and and look, um, I'm I'm gonna judge him personally after one once he has like a full season under his belt. Uh, well, like not judge him uh, 
to the point where I would say, oh, like he's shit or like we need to get rid of him. But just to get uh, an idea of, um, you know, what our investment is going to be of him for the next five years. And again, look, I've expressed uh, many times when we buy a new sign-in, <coughs> I feel a three-year period is a fair assessment on whether you want to keep that player for your long-term plans or to get rid of the player so that you can, I don't know, recoup as much money as you possibly could rather than running down the contract what we've done <coughs> in the previous decade. So hopefully into this new decade, we see less of that. So that's true. This is a good this is a good point from this guy here. He says 30 year old uh, Van Dyke to Liverpool 80 million, 27 year old younger Varan right now. So it's a good deal regardless. But hey, when you're looking at age and price, what he he's he's smart with his words. He chose his words wisely because people can misconstrue that as better. But when you see but he's saying better investment. And you know what, in my opinion. I think it's what? a good sign. I think it's a good sign, but people need to understand. Um, transfer windows are, are about opportunity. You know, I feel Man United's got to the point where a player like Varane has come on the market that they're able to get. Like, if this was like three seasons ago, I don't think they'll be getting a Varane. You know what I mean? The opportunity is right. The player wants to leave and he wants to come and challenge himself in the Premier League. I do feel the profile of defender that he is does match well with a Maguire. I think it could be a very good partnership. I know we look back on the last two years and think. He's not really done that great. But like I said on many streams, on the last two streams, I feel when it comes to players and you've been at a club for so long, you've won it all, it does have a, a what's it called, an impact on your performance. You can start having underwhelming performance when your desire is gone. And when you've won the Champions League three times from Madrid and how many title, league titles, you do lose a bit of desire. Sometimes you need a bit of a new challenge to then help pick your performance back up. So we will just have to wait and see and see how he performs in the Man United top. That's all you can leave it as. You can't really just judge a player beforehand. Mm. Yeah, so that was that. And then I got a couple more things that I got to go into. So let me just go through these quick, quick, uh, quick as possible before we get to the final part. Um, oh, oh, man, this is sad. Lucas Torreira struggling with... Um, with uh, his mental health uh, after the passing of his mother and Arsenal also struggling to get him alone. This it, this looks like an awkward situation where Arsenal might just have to bite the bullet and let him go out on loan because he, I don't think he can he can handle being away from his family. It's actually a, it's a tough situation. I don't know what's going on with him. But it, uh, there was an article today and I just feel like it's a, it's a touchy subject. We shouldn't really talk too much about it. Um, then you got Zachariah. Honestly, this is starting to become a joke. Gladbach are looking to get rid of him for about five million, but I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that situation. I don't think I think that's fake news personally. Then we got a situation with Tammy Abraham. Do we really want to talk about Tammy Abraham again for the fifth day in a row? Tammy okay. Abraham to Arsenal. The situation is Arsenal want okay. This this report came out of Sky. I'll I'll just talk about it right now. The, score, the report for Tammy Abraham is pretty interesting. It looks like Arsenal are 100% interested in the player, but they want a loan, and Chelsea want to, Chelsea want us to straight up just buy him for 40 million, and Arsenal don't want to buy the player straight up cash. So that's the report coming out of Sky. Sky, Sky Sports reported this today. So this is the report. <coughs> Arsenal and Tammy Abraham, can you just mute yourself, please? Um, would like an intention. Uh, would like an intentional loan, but Chelsea would like a permanent deal with a set price of forty million, reported by Sky Sports. I personally don't want Tan. I don't want Tammy Abraham. I personally feel like Tammy Abraham would would bring us down uh, a level. At the end of the day, we would be allocating funds to him when we can allocate that funds better. We could have got Andre Silva for half the price, which Leipzig got him for. And I get another English player, but we don't need all these players that are homegrown. We do need some, but we don't need all these players coming in to be homegrown. It's starting to get ridiculous at this point. I st I'm starting to, to believe. Especially, the especially, Go especially ahead. at that position, you got uh, especially at that position, you are right. We don't need a proofing. Yeah. Especially at that position. Yeah. I agree, bro. Yeah. Who really has a really good homegrown English striker? 
Like if we want if we want a homegrown English striker, why don't we go in for Danny Ings? The hell, why are we going in for Tammy Abraham? I I genuinely do not believe we're in for Tammy. I think it's not not on a permanent anyway. I think also probably looking at and think, okay, we got a Bamian. At the end of the day, you've got a Bamian there, you've got Martinelli there, you've got the likes of Bolligan there, a cheeky season loan, that's four strikers there. If he managed to come good and pull up some trees, then fair enough. If he doesn't, he goes back to Chelsea. I think that's the way also looking at it, more so than to spend 40 mil for him. Still you know a very silly be, deal. There'll be um, plenty more deals, um, players available in that position the following season. I think it's one of those stories that the newspaper love getting, uh, getting us triggered uh, because it's easy to get clicks off us when we're angry. Where if if where if it's something that's unbelievable, like a really good signing, like if we were linked to Holland, the story never even hit the ground running. People wouldn't believe it for a second. But the fact that it's somebody like Danny Ings or Tammy Abraham, or if we were linked to Chris Wood, everyone would lose their shit. Yeah, I don't believe it because I swear the full it was yesterday as well. I saw Bamford being linked as well, so that's why I just think it's bullshit. The thing about the loan though, Cash. That's still a very poor deal because you're risking the whole season. That every, everybody keeps saying it's the most important season for us. So if we don't get in Europe, blah blah blah, this and that, it's Arteta's only chance to succeed. Otherwise, he'll probably be sacked and the fans will be against him. If he wants to risk all of that on Tammy Abraham, who played six games last season, then it just proves that this guy is he, he has no faith in his team. He has no faith in his ability because he is putting all of his career at Arsenal on the shoulders of a Chelsea reject. Again, no, this is like the third time that I'll be doing I this. Think, I don't think he is because, let's face it, we've, we're playing in a season where we're only in free competition. Unless Aubameyang's got injuries, <laughs> Aubameyang's starting at least 80% of those games. Yeah, so why would you loan in Tammy Abraham then? Because that's just going to slow the development of Balogun and Martinelli. That's, that's why I don't believe it. I don't believe that we're in for it. I generally don't. Okay. Uh, and, gonna... and, and look, I'll be real with you. Look, look uh, uh, I agree with Kesh. I'm not entertaining this link. I just feel, uh, you know, back to what uh, uh, Igal said with, you know, with the earlier links. It's just uh, these journalists and these agents are just up to their same old tricks and linking us to any player left, right and centre from, from uh, England, from the continent, uh, just for uh, clicks uh, yeah. and reactions. Um, and look, uh, for me, uh, Abraham, um, like he's he, he's not the level that uh, we should be going out for. Uh, it's obviously uh, well known that he's an Arsenal fan, and that's yeah. for me the, the main reason why we're probably exactly. uh, uh, linked to him. And but look, like say, like look, say, uh, let's just entertain it just for a quick second, yeah. Mm -hmm. If this signing did happen. Mm -hmm. um, my frustration won't be just at Arteta. It will be the board as well, if not more, because mm -hmm. they're the ones who are giving the final yes and giving the go-ahead and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, making the funds available yeah. to get this transfer done. So, uh, you know, like I hear what uh, Gunarex is saying, but for me... Uh, you know, uh, whereas Abraham or any other player that we don't want, um, that we don't feel that is going to elevate us or progress us, I just feel uh, the board should be um, uh, uh, the board should be uh, on the chopping block as well, or uh, be held to uh, criticism, not just the manager. No, but again, I've been I've been saying that before the window even started, so. The thing about yeah, yeah uh, uh, I know you have Gunnarix, but I'm just like um, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm just making no, my point clear. So no credible person has come out and said that this Tandy link is true. Fabrizio himself has come out the first day he came out and said there's no links between that at all. Arsenal has not made put in any inquiries for Tandy. Difference between Madison now, it's been said that Arsenal been in negotiation, been asking about prices for Madison. So that's the reason to to believe that then the Tandy links. And let's not forget, Tammy, Chelsea's been trying to get rid of Tammy since the start of the window. They've been linked to the likes of West, West, West Ham and uh, I think Aston Villa, and he's yet to have a bid for him. So, of course, the agent's going to be pushing these things out to get his client a move. 
Egal, did anyone go on the terrace with Terry and say anything about the Tammy links? Bro, honestly, the Tammy Abraham links, this is how it's gone. This is how the whole thing's gone. From the beginning, it's the agent, the player uh, would, would like to stay in the Premier League. Agent has contacted Ch Ar uh, Arsenal. Arsenal have contacted Chelsea to find out the availability of Tammy Abraham. The loan thing is an inquiry was made. No formal conversation between the two clubs have actually gone to escalate the situation. Is it on? Yes, there, the groundwork has been put in place for the deal to be on. But is the deal anywhere near to being completed? Nowhere near being completed. If I were to say out of 100%, how far is this deal down the line? Literally 10%. All they've done is the due diligence. They haven't actually contacted anybody yet. There's no, no wage structure has been contacted about the player. There's been no actual former bids being uh, prepared at all. Lacazette hasn't even been sold yet. So Lacazette has to be sold first. And, and if Lacazette is sold, be prepared to hear Arsenal have agreed terms with Tammy Abraham because we have his agent's number, everything sorted out if we need to. But I don't want the deal to be done. And we're going to have to talk about other stuff. So we're going to keep it moving, guys. All right. Uh, the next thing that I want to talk about. Okay, so I seen a report today that Madison is gone and it, it won't be happening. So the Madison deal looks like it's off, right? Now, let me explain everything before, before I, I continue. The situation with the Madison deal is uh, uh, James Madison to Arsenal is not happening, according to Dean Jones on the Football Terrace today. They said Leicester do not want to sell Madison this summer. Chris Wheatley then said, James Madison being off, um, Odegaard could still be the number one target for Arsenal. And Odegaard will likely be allowed to leave Real Madrid this summer if there's a possible uh, op uh, option to sell. Real Madrid are still looking to sell Martin Odegaard. Now, Mateus Pereira would be also a superb option or plan B to, uh, to um, James Madison as he was Leicester's possible replacement for James Madison if they were to sell him himself. So what do you guys think? As a plan B, hey, go. Madison, who would you, me, let me finish. For, one, okay. second, one second, one second. As a plan B, who would you rather have? James Madison, who's, who's been playing at Leicester consistently for the past two seasons or three seasons, I forget how many years he's been there, or Mateus Pereira, who came up from the championship, had good numbers in the championship, had good numbers last year in the Premier League, but you also have to remember he's on penalties. So it's a big difference, and he's on all set pieces. So it can be a little bit bloated. Who are we taking, guys? Go ahead, Mufti. For me, if you ask me, like, uh, will you take uh, other guy back or uh, you get you sign Brera? For me, I will choose Brera, bro. Other guy is not good enough for us. Also, in the big game, is he uh, he's not consistent. You know, the problem is other guy is he can't keep the consistency, you know, he can't perform it uh, in the big game. So for me, I'll choose, I'll choose Pereira, yeah. I'll choose Pereira. Okay. I, would, I, I agree with him so, about his consistency, but I feel it's very unfair considering we loaned this guy who's not played all season and he's come in. And what, how many games did he play altogether for us? I forget. Oh, it wasn't a lot. 20, 20 games. He didn't play 20 games. Good old. How many games did he play? Let me double check. Martin Odegaard for Arsenal last year. He played, yeah, he played 20 games. Really? Six Europa yeah. League, 15 Premier League. Okay, but yeah, as a player who's just come off the back of a, um, a summer where he's not played for Madrid, he's coming to a team that's very dysfunctional. Let's not forget that. It's not as if it takes one player to just... I'd be have a world beater of games like it's about the team having cohesion and actually having an understanding between each other to get the best out of each other. So we can't expect them to come in and be Superman for us. Now, just as I say that, another Twitter RT ITK says Arsenal are writing a 65 million pound bid for James Madison. Now, I don't believe these guys anymore because every friggin' day, every day. Now, let, let me just take this off screen. Guys, every single day, how many days out of the week are you going to tell me, yes, he's on, no, he's off? Like, this is bullshit now. It's starting to get ridiculous. I said like, this how long ago, ago. Like, I don't think anyone really knows what Arsenal's doing. I think a lot of people are just going off guess and hoping they hit the one-hit wonder. I think that's what it is. No one knows what Arsenal's doing. 
I, yeah. I, at this point, I cannot, I cannot, I, uh, as a fan base that is so like topsy and turvy and, and, and does not listen, I, I go to people that I trust. And one of the people that I trust is Chris Davidson. Uh, I trust Chris Wheatley. I trust uh, some of these guys on what they say, and they even get it wrong. But I went up to him today because I was kind of frustrated hearing some of the news. I said, do you expect outgoings and incomings completed before the end of the window? I'm starting to be worried uh, worried myself, right? He said, I'm still relatively calm, and I expect things to really pick up before uh, now, be between now and August 31st, of course, because the window is going to close. As I mentioned, thought, uh, what? Quite important to get out. I would say only concern at the moment. Sometimes people need to leave in order to others to come in. So he's basically just saying he's he Arsenal's more focused on getting players out, and this is just his opinion. It's not like he has insider information. This is based on his op opinion on things that he he's listened or heard in the news. So this is Chris Davidson's uh, reporting right there, and I'm just frustrated, guys. This is really frustrating me as a fan who's constantly doing reports on on news and just reading everything. It's almost like half the players that we're linked to, we don't even contact as a club. It's bullshit. And it's just starting to get annoying. And Aslan, I know I told you not to be annoyed, but I'm starting to get annoyed. Not because we haven't signed players, but I don't trust anybody anymore. I don't know who to trust. I, I see reports. I see where, what the hell was that? I see more reports from foreign newspaper articles that are more accurate about what's going on in the UK than I do about uh, what Sky or, or or the Sun or anybody else would say. You know, you know, Egal, just hearing you out, I just put out a status, James Madison and two timers. Now people will start sharing that around as well. So <laughs> Twitter is just crazy. I don't take Twitter serious anymore. I've realized you can't take Twitter serious because half the ITKs on Twitter don't know what they're talking about. Yo, Gunnar Express, you're going to say something because you unmuted yourself? Uh, well, I was going to, you know, answer the question about, you know, Erdegaard and Pereira and that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, but yeah, I agree with what Mahadeen said. Um, for me, Erdegaard, you can say about the consistency and how he didn't play and stuff like this. Uh, well, he didn't play because he isn't good enough to play for Real Madrid. That's the reason. Uh, he also played a lot of games for Sociedad the season before. So it's not like he had like two years off. It was six months. Uh, and as a professional footballer, there's no excuses for, for lack of fitness or anything like that when it comes to, you know, six month period. So I don't really hear the inconsistency calls as well. We're going to be spending 40, 50, 60 million on him. What we've seen of Erdegaard, no fan can sit here and genuinely tell me that from what we've seen, he's worth that money. Yes, you can argue about the potential, uh, this and that, but what we've seen was not good enough. Um, so a lot of fans won't be happy if we, if we spend a lot of money on him. So I'm taking Pereira every single day of the week uh, over Erdegaard, but I'm not going to start him. He's going to be a bench player. Smith Rowe will start and Pereira will come in whenever Smith Rowe needs a rest or if he gets injured or something like that, because I don't think Pereira is particularly good enough to start for Arsenal. Uh, but I'd definitely rather have him as a backup Smith Rowe start than Erdegaard. So, Didn't Pereira yeah. play predominantly as a left winger last year? Yeah. Yeah, which is why that's what I'm saying. That's why I wouldn't start him. You know, I'd, I'd have him as a bench and just use him whenever he's needed. Like, I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't use him a lot, kind of thing. Like, only when he is actually needed to be used. See, I don't. I don't can, I, can I just pick up this comment right here by now? Following, following rumors will drive you mad, hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a fact. It's a fact, right there. What were you gonna say, Natish? I was going to say, okay, let me first tell, uh, tell you about that Madison thing. I told you, I just tweeted it out. It's already gotten four likes and one retweet in a minute. <laughs> so imagine just putting it out there, people are talking about it. But anyways, I was going to say, I think Odegaard has some qualities that he can do well with that Arsenal. The thing is, we but we don't need to spend 50, 60 million on midfielders right now because we don't have European football. And at the moment, we have not been able to get rid of any of our dead wood. Uh, I would prefer to have both of them instead of a Madison. I think uh, Pereira is quite cheap and Odegaard is like, if we get him for around 30 to 40 million, I don't mind having him. If we can develop him, he can be a good player. Let's not go based on six months out of which one month he was already injured and then he's come back and he couldn't do more than the, what he tried to do. And let's give him the chance because he's a young player as well. 
we need we are going for young players we need more young players and if if we can develop him see the best example is chelsea has a lot of young talent a lot of those players don't get any opportunities to play for chelsea like the best example maybe you can take as uh, is lamptey but the thing is it does not mean that the player is piss poor it means that chelsea buy so many big names that their youngsters do not get the opportunities to play and odegaard had a similar thing at real madrid when he was bought there were so many big names at real madrid he never got into the team and he was sent out on loan and mishandled and the handling is not till date it's not been good with him so he could have been a bigger player a better player but the handling of real madrid has not been up to the mark as well in this case so if arsenal can grow him and develop him and put him in the right mold and frame of mind he can do big things for us as well um i just want to point out pereira uh, last season uh you know just looking at his stats um you know his ga output was 12 goals and 6 assists uh in total uh and it's fair to say that he can play um along um the attacking front line but last season he had 15 starts on the right wing 12 starts in uh, in the attacking midfield and three starts uh on the left wing um but he scored more goals as an attacking midfielder in five two as a right winger and three as a uh, left winger um i mean yeah and i agree with gunerex i feel that if we bring him in um uh, i mean like what's the valuation that's been reported what around 15 mil Uh, honestly the, yeah, at this point it's so early in the links that they don't even give you actual concrete value right okay I but i mean yeah i mean if it is around 50 mil uh i would bring him in as a uh, as a backup uh to pepe on the right as um, as can i stop you right now um the issue with that is it's so late in the window that west bromwich albion are going to ask for more because they cannot replace him immediately and there's no buyout clause no but egal th- th- this is the issue that me and asline and others have been trying to say right this is why we are sick and tired of buying players late people have been selling i, I get that you're going to have to buy people like madison and that late that those deals aren't just going to come like you know like 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 oh, they're not going to be easy like, it's quite obvious like i'm not stupid people aren't stupid we know these things but this is where the issues arise if you buy madison very early in the window he will like you've just said he will be cheaper than if you were to buy him in the last week because it gives less a time to spend that money and replace him properly whereas if you're buying him with like a week or two left to go which is what if we're going to sign madison that's probably what it sounds like lester either a going to have to buy someone preemptively and just hope that madison actually goes or they're going to have to find someone to buy within that week or two space and they're not going to get who they want or they're not going to you know have a, enough time to find the perfect player this is why I'm bored of us buying players late because we spend stupid money on players that might not be worth it like pepe i think that's a big reason why pepe was so much money was because we bought him late and lil couldn't replace him as well we're not giving these players pre- madison won't get a pre-season at arsenal and this is where the issues arise we said with pepe an excuse for pepe and i made this excuse and i kind of wish i didn't but pepe an excuse for pepe was he didn't get a full pre-season parte didn't get a full pre-season even sanchez when he started off a little bit slow okay uh, no. i just want to uh, pinpoint out it's brought is it was brought to my attention that where i mentioned um pereira's ga output last season that he scored five pens as well So just yeah. to add a bit of context, make of that what you will. My stream has bugging out, fam. Got it. Um, he was on penalty duties last season as well. So okay, guys, I'm just gonna put this out quickly. Uh, new set piece goal uh, coach. Uh, he's got a lot of work to do. So we're gonna we're gonna see what he can bring to the table, oh. helping out the club. Also, there was what a- is that the new guy that we brought in from Man City, the set yeah. piece coach? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's guys. Go check out. Go check out this guy's channel. He had an interview with Fabrizio Romano. He's an Arsenal fan, right? Go check out his channel. I'll put I'll put the link I'll put the link to his to his video in the in the comment section afterwards. But oh, is he, he that Australian Guna? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I interacted with him uh, on Thanks. Facebook. Yeah, but that's up to me. Okay, so just listen to what he said about what Fabrizio Romano said on his channel about um, Arsenal. Perfect to play as number ten in in, in Arsenal. 
style of the player. They are convinced that he could be like perfect to play Madison. as number ten in, in in Arsenal in Arsenal plans. But as of today, it's not an advanced deal because Leicester are really, really convinced that the player could stay and they want to keep the player. So it's not an easy one. <laughs> and talking about the number 10 for Arsenal, I always say, since months, keep an eye on Martin Odegaard. Because if they will have mm. a 1% ch- chance to sign him from Real Madrid again, they-, they will be there. They will be there also the last days of the window. So they want Martin Odegaard. They love Martin Odegaard. He was really happy about the atmosphere at the the club uh, with Arsenal. He was really happy with Arteta. So Martin Odegaard is still one of the options for Arsenal. Madison is is a player really appreciated, highly appreciated, but not an easy deal with with Leicester, absolutely. Okay. So, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link to that full video right now in the comment section. What you guys can do is you guys can let him know that I... Oh, sorry about that. What you guys can do is let him know that I sent you over. And whenever you, whenever you get a chance, go check out that full video. Guys, I'm pretty much done here. Is there anything else that you guys want to talk about before we go? Uh, just want to say one thing. I don't get the feeling that for the signings that we have had, three C's, three signings, Lokonga, Tavares, and Ben White, Arteta has been backed. So it's just another Unai Emery situation. And if if there are no more signings, then this is going to be as bad as last season and the season probably before that. Yeah, uh, I just want to point out and, um, you know, off topic, crom- uh, compliment uh, Muhyiddin. Muhyiddin, brother, you're looking sharp, boy. Hey, bro, thank you. How you're are you, bro? Tire. It's been a long time. It's top notch, my brother. I'm Thank liking you, it. I'm liking it. Thank you, bro. I, I hope you're fine, man. Yeah, all well, bro. All well. Yeah, you. man's got some drip, fan. Chat. Look at that. People in the chat, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna put the link to that video right now. Go check them out. <coughs> do 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 me a favor. Let them know EGTV sent you, right? Because uh, because he was nice enough to send to send me that information and let let me use some of his content. So go check out his channel. Go subscribe to his channel if you guys want to go help him out. Good Arsenal channel there. And yeah, guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new. Go check out everyone's social media. As you got Guna Express here uh, on the good at the Guna Express, uh, and he also has a YouTube channel, the Guna Express. You got Natish beyond the post on Twitter and on YouTube. You got Kesh, you already know underscore Kesh underscore Aslan AFC. My guy Aslan Mahdeen. I don't know if he's on socials, but he's looking fly. And yeah, you guys already know what it is. The Kitty G. I'm out of here. I'm working from home. Let me show you guys my, my new setup. So this is my new setup. Jeez. Yeah, I'll let you guys go. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Peace.